If I have to give up something, I'd rather give up my hearing than my eyes. I thought I had something major wrong, and it was just a two-step process. The, the two uh, uh, men that in, invented this, too, is, was, was quite a, a feat uh, for people that have problems with their, their tear ducts. My grandfather's one of my heroes, without a doubt. He has a better way for absolutely everything. He, he has so much passion for what he does and he doesn't let anyone get in his way. The other things that people don't know about Gunther is, you know, they think of Gunther Weiss as a person who blows glass tubes and that's his business. But actually he had two high-tech businesses that got started with glass blowing but then morphed into silicone wafers and that sort of thing at just the time when the silicone forest here in Portland was starting to take off. He's always got uh, a clever quip. Um, he always has an opinion and, and uh, he has the brains to back up his opinions. You might not always agree with him. Once you meet him, you know he deserves to be where he is. My grandfather uh, had primarily a private practice. I never had a chance to ever watch him operate. Um, but you know, most of my uh, growing up with him was at his house. Uh, he, He's really a renaissance man. Lester Jones was a great anatomist. He taught general anatomy to the dental school students for 20 years. He wanted to compare anatomy between animals and the human, and his interest was uh, unbelievable, and his willingness to teach was great. Gunther Weiss and Lester Jones met because they were connected by Dick Jones, who was Lester's son. Uh, Dick was chair of the biochemistry department here at, at OHSU, and Gunther Weiss was doing a lot of the work in developing the glass works for the biochemistry department at that time. I spent a couple of months watching him dissecting human heads. Uh, showing me how the tear duct, the natural tear duct system works. What is it doing? How does it look? Where does it have to drain? I said, you know, there is only one material known to man that has the natural capillary attraction. What nature has. Like a tree gets its food all the way to the top. Capillary attraction. And that's glass. There is nothing else. He wasn't all that hot about it. He says, well, what about if it breaks and all that? Uh, and I always just chuckled and laughed. I said, you know, Lester, if a tube is in there and the person gets hurt that bad where the tube breaks, the tube is his last little problem. It worked. It worked fantastic. He went on speaking tours at the Ace Harbor and many other places. He traveled probably two, three months out of the year all over the world giving talks, explaining the, the system, uh, the procedure, teaching all the way from Africa to all over Europe, everywhere. These tubes are available and they're shipped all over the world. They are inexpensive and it doesn't require high technology. Well, I personally have traveled to different countries. I've been to Honduras several times, uh, Albania, Egypt, and it's, uh, it's great to be able to share this uh, knowledge of how to use this tube with uh, people around the world. I was in China and given a lecture on the glass tube and after the lecture I had some people come up and talk to me and they said, are you aware that in China we have made some of these tubes out of gold? And the trouble is they didn't have capillary attraction. And the funny part about it, I said, you know, I'd like to trade you uh, some of the glass tubes I have for your gold ones. I said, you know, Gunther, one of the problems that we still have with the tube, when it works, it's just fabulous, but we have people where the tube will migrate or fall out or migrate into the nose, and sometimes that means return trips for them. It seems to me if we took the tubes that we have and treated them like, like sandblasting glass, we could make a little bit of a rough surface that would actually hold the tissues better. I worked on it to change the surface on the glass. 
So what I did, I roughened the surface up. And it worked perfectly. Uh, not only did it stay in place in all the patients we put it in originally, uh, but they didn't have any new problems like increased infections, redness, that sort of thing. So uh, that has been probably the biggest advance in the tube technology in the last three decades, I would say. Lester was one thing that I have seen very rarely. He was an enormously patient person to teach. Okay? Now, if he found that somebody was not really there with his mind and heart, he forget about him. That's why only few people made it. Okay? And so it was first uh, uh, naturally Jack Wopik, and after Wopik, uh, Wopik was very instrumental for Roger Daly. I have uh, very strong feelings for Dr. Wobig. You know, he provided me with uh, quite a career. Um, you know, the old saying, you can give somebody a fish, they eat for a day, you teach them how to fish, and they can eat for a lifetime, and that's really true with a fellowship scenario. I, I feel like Jack Wobig really he didn't save my life, but he drove my life in a direction into a career where I'm incredibly happy and I feel lucky to be able to do what I love to do every day, make a difference in people's lives and, you know, have a successful career. Gunther made a commitment to Lester Jones 40 years ago that he would continue to make the glass tubes as long as he could and make them affordable so that anybody that needed them could get them. It is so difficult to train somebody. Scott, for years before he had it down the way it should be. I have made a commitment to Gunther and to everyone that's involved with the Jones tubes that I will carry on Gunther's commitment to making sure that these tubes are always available. I inspect it, not everything, but ever so often I come in, I check it. I make sure it is right. That I gave a solemn promise to Lester. What a great privilege it was to work with both Lester and Gunther. And uh, I want to really thank uh, Richard Jones for initiating the Lester T. Jones chair because it's been a real additive up here at KCI Institute, both for the purposes of education and research. They're, they're able to do what's best for patients but, and also really focus on innovation and improvement uh, rather than just think about reimbursement. As I think about the Jones uh, chair, it's, uh, it's inevitable that you think about the, the holders of the chair. And you know, we've, we've just spent some time uh, talking about uh, Lester for whom the chair was named. And then we move on to uh, Jack Wobick and what I remember as I, th as I think about Jack is the fact that he, like Lester, was uh, totally committed to what he was doing and carried on in, this, in the same tradition of excellence. And Dr. Wobick brought such joy to what he did and uh, was, uh, you know, everybody always looked forward to, to Dr. Wobick coming to the uh, operating room. And m moving on, we seen, see those same qualities exhibited by the current holder of the chair, Dr. Roger uh, Daly. Dr. Daly is easy to work with, and his team is great, especially the surgical unit. They are very good at making you feel like you're not the only one there. It really has a feeling of family here, um, and I have a, a great deal of respect for my colleagues, but also a great deal of affection for them as, as people. As you go back and think about the history of this university, our motto is where healing, teaching, and discovery come together. And I think the Jones Tube really, and the work behind it, epitomizes that.